Hi, my name's James Headley. I'm a PhD student at the University of Sydney. The research I'm presenting today looks at cancers in potential organ donors and compares cancer information perceived at time of donor referral to what could be verified retrospectively through linked health records. The first aim is to compare perceived and verified cancers in terms of their risk of transmission to a potential transplant recipient. The second aim is to identify any missed donor opportunities. This means any donor referrals who potentially could have donated but were declined due to their perceived risk of cancer transmission. Finally, I'll explore how utilization of missed opportunities may be improved, for example, with real-time data linkage. This study relies on the SafeBod Biovigilance Register in New South Wales, the largest state in Australia with a population of 8 million. SafeBod links New South Wales organ donor referrals, donors and recipients to their health records. We have data for all potential donors from 2010 onwards and for all cancers from 1972 to the end of 2013. Hence our study period is where these data sets overlap, 2010 to 2013. During this time, there were 1,700 referrals for solid organ donation made to the New South Wales Organ and Tissue Donation Service, OTDS for short. Most of these were New South Wales residents, so we would expect any healthcare they received would have been captured by New South Wales Health. Ignoring any potential cancers for the moment, 472 referrals were suitable for organ donation. They had family consent and were otherwise medically suitable. Of these, 132 were declined for donation because of their cancer transmission risk, while 340 became actual donors. Those declined for donation are potential missed opportunities, and we need to investigate their perceived and verified cancers to determine whether the decision to decline was appropriate. SafeBot includes several data sets that may report cancer with varying levels of detail. Obviously, the cancer registry is the gold standard for identifying cancers. However, we can sometimes get additional details from other sources. We used all available data to determine which cancers were verified, with details reported or not reported in the cancer registry taking precedence. Perceived cancers were those reported by the OTDS or ANZOD, since these would have been known at time of referral. These are a subset of verified cancers However, the specific details of the cancer that are perceived may differ to what is verified. For example, a donor's tumour may be perceived to be malignant, but if there is no corresponding record in the cancer registry, it would be verified to be benign. In other words, a perceived cancer that could not be verified. To determine the risk of cancer transmission associated with each cancer, we use the Transplant Society of Australia and New Zealand guidelines. There are six different risk categories. Contraindicated, where donation is never allowed, for example, any metastatic cancer. High risk, such as malignant melanoma. Intermediate risk, such as breast cancer in situ. Low risk, such as prostate cancer confined to the prostate. Minimal risk, such as small renal cell carcinomas. And not contraindicated, such as many primary brain malignancies. Looking back to the 472 referrals who were potentially suitable for donation, the risk of cancer transmission was accurately perceived in 83%. Accuracy would have been improved with real-time linkage to hospital records, APDC, or to the cancer registry, CCR. Interestingly, linking to hospital records is beneficial even in addition to linkage to the cancer registry. This is because the cancer registry is lagged by three years, whereas hospital records, while not the best source of information, are only lagged by six months. Now we can investigate the 132 referrals who were potentially suitable but were declined for donation. We can compare their perceived and verified cancer transmission risk to determine whether this decision was appropriate. In this table, perceived risk is shown in the rows with lower risk at the top and higher risk at the bottom. The columns show the verified risk, with lower risk on the left and higher risk on the right. For the moment, let's assume that a low risk of transmission would be acceptable, with anything intermediate risk or higher unacceptable. 
The columns to the left of our threshold are verified suitable for donation because their verified risk is low, while those on the right are verified unsuitable because their verified risk is high. Similarly, the rows above our threshold are perceived suitable for donation and those below are perceived unsuitable. Remember, none of these people actually donated, so for now we don't need to worry about transmissions. Those who were verified suitable for donation but did not donate are missed opportunities. Under our assumed threshold, 33% of referrals declined because of cancer could have donated. This includes six who were perceived suitable and 38 who were perceived to be unsuitable. On the other hand, those who were verified unsuitable represent a correct decision. In this case, 67% of declines due to cancer were appropriate. We can also see how things change with different risk tolerance thresholds. If we have a stricter threshold, only 30% are missed opportunities. Whereas with a more relaxed threshold, 38% would be missed opportunities. So what can we do about this? This graph shows the number of missed donor opportunities under our assumption of a low risk threshold. In this case, there would be 44 missed opportunities over our four year study period, which is exactly what we saw in the previous table. The bar at the top shows the 40 missed opportunities under a stricter risk threshold. And the bar at the bottom shows the 50 missed opportunities under a more relaxed risk threshold. One strategy for improvement could be providing additional decision support to ensure the clinical guidelines are being followed. A number of potential donors are declined due to cancer, even when they are low risk and all relevant information is available at time of referral. For example, there are instances where a potential donor with prostate cancer has been rejected, despite this cancer being classified as low risk in the TSA and Z guidelines. Another approach might be to improve the information available at referral, for example, with real-time linkage to hospital records and the cancer registry. Although this improves accuracy of information available, we didn't find a single example where real-time data linkage would have resulted in a missed opportunity being avoided. This is because of the lag in cancer registry data, which means even with linkage, we wouldn't have known about cancers diagnosed within the previous three years. Even if this lag were hypothetically reduced to six months, only one additional donor would have been perceived suitable. Unfortunately, most missed opportunities are because of recent cancers that could only have been confirmed suitable with perfect information. Based on these results, improving decision support appears to be the best solution. However, another approach may be to increase our risk tolerance threshold. This would be an easy and effective way of increasing donation, but would obviously come with some serious additional risks and is something I'm looking into at the moment. We can attempt to predict how implementing some of these changes might increase donation now and in the future with a simple extrapolation. With no changes, we would expect around 180 donors in 2021. This would increase slightly if we implemented decision support with five extra donors and 16 extra organs available for transplant. Increasing risk tolerance would improve things further with an extra nine donors and 33 organs available for transplant. In conclusion, we found that perceived cancer transmission risk is accurate in 83% of referrals. This could be improved slightly with linkage to the cancer registry, which is currently being implemented by OTDS. A third of referrals declined due to cancer were verified to be suitable for donation and were therefore missed opportunities. The best approach to improving use of missed opportunities is through decision support in applying the TSA and Z guidelines. In increasing risk tolerance may also be worth exploring. Thank you.